Good evening, everyone. It's great to see you all tonight. Um, one of the first questions we are asked when we join Freemasonry is what come you here to do? We come to learn, we come to subdue our passions, and we come to improve ourselves through Freemasonry. And we hope that we can offer that experience for you this evening. Brothers, it's a pleasure to be with you yet again. This episode marks our 17th education in the series entitled 21st Century Conversations on Freemasonry. And this is the 36th episode since we started this virtual education almost two years ago. As we all know, to be a brother within our Masonic fraternity, it's a privilege. It's an honor. So let us be mindful to utilize the tools provided to us in our education this evening to help us better understand ourselves and achieve further light in masonry. For everyone who is returning tonight, we thank you for coming back. For those of you who are new joining us for the first time, we welcome you and we thank you for being with us this evening. First, I would like to go through and recognize the Masonic sponsors who without their help, this virtual Masonic education series would not be possible. First, I wanna thank the Rubicon Masonic Society, which is an invitation only private group of Master Mason Freemasons located in Lexington, Kentucky. I want to also thank William O'Ware Lodge of Research, chartered in 1965, it is Kentucky's oldest research lodge. And finally, I want to thank Lexington Lodge No. 1, chartered in 1788, it is the oldest Masonic lodge in Kentucky. Alongside Worshipful Brother Dan Kimball, Worshipful Brother Tom Nitsky, Worshipful Brother John Bizak, my name is Brian Evans, I'm the past Master of Lexington Lodge No. 1 and current Chair of Rumicon, and again, thank you for joining us this evening, let us proceed. Worshipful Brother Tom Nitsky, will you please do the honors, sir, and deliver the opening devotion. Brethren, if you'll join me. Grand Architect of the Universe, as we gather together today for this meeting, may we be guided in all the way and all we say or do by a strong sense of your purpose with us. Grant us for our labors the wages proper for us, the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy. May our meeting together on this day be such that nourishes and sustains us in the work which are ours as Masons. May the friendship we share as brethren give refreshment to our spirits. May the proceedings in which we are engaged and the friends we greet today give us joy that encourages us, revitalizes us, and adds deep meaning to our lives together. Amen. So mode it be. Thank you, brethren. Brothers, the purpose of our virtual Masonic education series is simple. It's to assist in the improvement of oneself by establishing a deeper understanding of Freemasonry, its traditions, its practices, and further cementing the brotherhood of the fraternity for the betterment of mankind. Please be aware that any opinions expressed during this virtual education will be those of the presenter or the participant, and they do not necessarily reflect the views of any lodge or grand lodge or the Rubicon Masonic Society please visit our website, rubiconmasoniccsociety.com slash disclaimer for further information. Brothers, as you know, these are not tiled meetings. Masons and non-Masons are welcome to attend and participate. Gentlemanly manners are to be expected at all times. No alcohol, no smoking, no eating, no foul language is permitted. There will also be no discussion of politics or religion at any time. Please be mindful that anything discussed this evening should be suitable for Masons of all degrees, as well as non-Masons. Some quick recommendations to best assure that this virtual meeting is as enjoyable as possible. We recommend that the attire for each meeting is coat and tie. Please type your name and any appropriate Masonic title or location under your video to identify yourself to others. If you're not a Mason, please simply type guest after your name. Please also enable your video camera so other attendees can see you. Please reduce background noise. Keep your microphone muted when not speaking. Please turn off all other computer programs, eliminate outside distractions. And finally, please be patient should any technical difficulties occur. Tonight, I'm looking forward to a lively discussion. Our guest presenter is most worshipful brother, Doug Cottle, past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of North Carolina. He will be speaking with us tonight about the method of building and maintaining an observant lodge. Worship Brother Bizak, will you please do the honors of introducing our special guest? We're glad to. Thank you. Doug Cottle is past master of the Grand Lodge of North Carolina, and he's past master of Sophia Lodge, number 767 in North Carolina, which is that state's first observant lodge. 
During his term, he oversaw the chartering of two other observant lodges in the jurisdiction, and the Grand Lodge of North Carolina passed blanket recognition of Prince Hall Grand Lodges that are recognized by their counterpart, Grand Lodges. He's currently the secretary of the Masonic Restoration Foundation, and he's going to speak with us tonight on the method of building and maintaining an observant lodge. Brother Cottle, the floor is yours. John, thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, Brethren, thank you for, uh, for you know, you had uh, options tonight. You could, uh, you probably had uh, places you could have been and maybe even should have been, but you chose to be here. And so uh, I take that uh, to heart and very, very much appreciate that. So thank, thank you so much. Um, Brother Brian, do I do the share screen to, to show my uh, dog and pony show? Yes, most works, but I'm going to stop share on my end, and then you can resume uh, at your end. So you should be free to do so now. Okay, let's see here. Okay, do we? Are, is my screen live now? Mm, no, not seeing it yet. Okay, I probably didn't click the right thing or something. <clears throat> There we are. Is that it? That's it. Wow. Okay. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> okay. All right, brethren. This um, this is a program that I presented uh, at the the MRF symposium uh, up in Detroit back in uh, April of this year, and uh, it's it's about uh, as uh, brother John mentioned, building and maintaining an observant lodge. And uh, observant lodge, that's something uh, that is a, a term that the MRF uses. Uh, many, many lodges will use the term traditional observant. And Brother Andrew Hammer has a, has a very nice presentation on why it's observant uh, instead of traditional observant lodge. And this is, this is just something that, um, this is not a playbook, a definitive this is what you must do to, to be successful. It's just the way we did. And of course, like in any new endeavor, we had uh, uh, no major missteps, but we had, we had adjustments that, that we made along, along the way. And this was, uh, this was started in uh, 2012. So we're coming up uh, quickly on our, our 10 years uh, of being organized. So uh, with that, we will continue on. There we go. Just like uh, in any building, you have to start with a good foundation, and we've got four here. Uh, the first, if you're building a, uh, an observant lodge, is you have to involve your district or and and or grand lodge officers. Um, you know, it's just uh, that's that's just what we have to do, and uh, have a steering committee four to six. And I'm gonna go over each of these in detail. Uh, after you get the, the foundation laid, expand it to eight to 12 to get the, start bring, bringing some other, other voices in. In a statement of principles, and we're going to talk about that uh, again uh, in just a moment, but this is, uh, this is your core right here. Uh, involving your district officers, you know, I've had folks that uh, want to, to kind of organize in secret because they're afraid they're going to get, get shot down very quickly. And that is a recipe for disaster. You gotta, everything's got to be above board and understanding what's, what's going on. What, one of the things, including in North Carolina, was the, uh, the Chamber of Reflection. And if that's a, a sensitive topic, I recommend just dropping it. Uh, it's nothing that uh, has to be. Uh, it's something that uh, most folks like, like anything. If you don't understand it, you fear it. And so that's where a lot of this comes in. Build some trust after you, you get organized and you're doing things, build some trust and then, then come back to the chamber of reflection. So don't let that be something to, uh, if there's pushback on that, to, to drop it. Find out what these pushbacks are from your district and Grand Lodge officers. Uh, find out what's going on and either address it by either not doing it or answering questions and giving them a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, I'm from North Carolina and, uh, you know, alcohol is a, a big, uh, big deal sometimes here. Uh, not in some of the other states, but for us, it, it was. And when we started talking about having um, 
uh, harmonies with with wine, that was a uh, that was some pushback with some folks. So so address that uh, when it comes esoteric teaching. That was that was another biggie. Uh, folks were were afraid we were going to go into off all these uh, wild things and uh, that were not Masonic related. So uh, again, address all of these things. Music, believe it or not, there was some pushback by, for us wanting to bring music into Lodge. Uh, although it was in our, uh, uh, our monitor, which we call a Bonson manual, all those songs were in it. Uh, folks uh, thought that we, we weren't able to use, use music. So uh, anyway, it was an education and it worked out great. So uh, everything moved on. And of course, uh, dot your I's and cross your T's. Uh, whatever forms and uh, hoops you have to, to jump through, just do them. Uh, don't try to, don't try to short, shortcut it, but uh, do it and do it properly. The, the steering committee that, that I mentioned, uh, four to six like-minded brothers, you know, that's something that um, if you get a, a group much larger than that, you start, um, it, sometimes it can uh, go down bad roads. So start out with four to six and just uh, start, start building there. And you can, you, if, if you've got four to six right like-minded brothers, you can, you can get things pretty well figured out. Uh, at least your good, your good foundation. Uh, and these things for these four to six to do is the general outlines, uh, such as your dues. Uh, we chose to have uh, $365 as our dues. And that's, we kind of broke it down to a dollar a day. That's, that's why we, we chose that. Uh, also your education format, music, lighting, lo location, where you're going to, to meet. Uh, and of course, then you start getting the outline of your statement of principles, which we'll talk about in uh, just a moment of, uh, as well. One of the things to be very mindful of, uh, sometimes we have some strong-minded folks. So be, be wary of the, the lodge boss who uh, is unbending on some things and uh, kind of wants to run, run roughshod over the, over the group. So be be mindful of that uh, when, as you're doing it. After you get this, uh, your outline created, expand that group then to, to eight to 12. Uh, start, start bringing in other folks that, that can help you with it. Uh, in North Carolina, we have what's called the Board of Custodians who uh, are the overseers of the work, our uh, official standard of the work. Uh, we actually brought a member uh, in or even a district uh, officer. Uh, have them have them come in and, and review what you're doing. Maybe they won't join, but at least they'll they'll give you some guidance on, on what to do. And then, of course, like with anything, you have to develop a budget. Uh, you're going to be spending money and uh, develop develop that budget. The next uh, that I mentioned earlier is the statement of principles. On the right side of the screen is uh, the first page uh, of ours. We call it an affirmation of lodge principles. And uh, it's just a simple explanation of what you will and, and will not do. And so that's what this does. This is your core. It's what, what this lodge is about. And, and um, you know, looking at some of the buzzwords, I guess it could be, uh, well, it's not really a mission statement, but similar to that is, is what, what you're about. And so um, this is something that all members must agree to and sign. So that's not just the... Uh, any incoming members, uh, all members, whether they affiliate or they're an organic member, uh, this is something that they um, uh, agree to and sign. Uh, and what this does, it limits that operational drift. I'm, I've spent most of my uh, adult life in manufacturing on the manufacturing company, and I uh, was always battling operational drift. And that's where when things uh, are supposed to be uh, one procedure and then we start maybe shortcutting uh, or going down, uh, trying to make it easier, but wind up losing uh, quality uh, for that. So this statement of principles or affirmation, it really limits that operational drift because everything's written down what we will and what we won't do. Develop a, and, and this is in the beginning too, develop a talking point sheet because that's, this is something where everybody's 
uh, it's, it's along the same lines. Everybody's speaking from the, or reading from the same sheet of music or how, whatever analogy you want to use. It's just basically bullet points of what you're wanting to accomplish. And, and ours was delivering on our promises uh, without going into a lot of detail on it. You know, we, uh, uh, if you do a Google search of Masonic uh, or just masonry or anything like that, typically what's going to come up is uh, uh, our beautiful buildings that, that many of us have, uh, famous, so-called famous masons, and also then the, uh, the conspiracy theory things as well. But uh, so we weren't in North Carolina, we weren't delivering on those promises. Our, our, our men who were applying, uh, signing petitions, wanting to, to join us, that was what they were wanting and we weren't delivering on it, uh, especially when it came to Masonic education. Uh, it seemed to stop at the lecture and then it went into fundraising. So these are things that uh, we were not delivering on our promises and we've still got a, got a ways to go, but we were, uh, we're making some great strides in, in that. And as I mentioned, this is just as much what you're, you're not going to do. Uh, and this again, we're talking about the talking point sheet. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things, believe it or not, was uh, we, we heard not from one, but several sources that we would run off anyone who was not uh, wearing a tuxedo if they came, came to our lodge. And, and actually, uh, I believe it was our second meeting. It was, it was either our second or third meeting. A, uh, a good brother uh, came to our meeting and um, with uh, tennis shoes, blue jeans, and a t-shirt on. And I think he was testing us. And uh, we, of course, invited him in. Uh, he came, came to the meeting and seemingly had, had a good time. Uh, I, we could tell he was really uh, kind of, kind of uh, watching things very, very closely. But, uh, you know, we, we did say, you know, this is typically what our, what our uh, dress requirements are. Obviously, you didn't understand that. You're still welcome. But when you come back, this is, this is what we ask. And so uh, uh, he never, never came back. But uh, he was kind of, I think he was trying to, test us a little bit. And uh, so any, any of those other things, what you're, you're not trying to accomplish. Uh, create a handout. We, we developed this little trifold brochure uh, because sometimes folks hear what they want to hear uh, and don't hear what they need to hear. So we just had a little, uh, little trifold brochure that we, we uh, created that just uh, listed several things that, that we did. And that, that seemed to work, work very well. After you get uh, different uh, jurisdictions have uh, how many uh, masons it takes to, to organize a lodge. So when you get to that number that have committed, certainly uh, then have an organizational meeting, preferably at the location of the lodge that you'll, you'll be meeting in or, or building or facility you'll be meeting in. Uh, have a solid spokesman uh, for, for the meeting uh, who states facts, uh, be, be wary of the, the hard sell kind of, kind of guy that's, that's trying to maybe, maybe just a little over the top. And uh, I know it's, it's cliche, but uh, if it's done uh, observant masonry, folks want it. You don't have to sell it. They, uh, uh, we had so many people uh, that, that came to us, that visited us, that joined us. And they said, this is what I've been looking for. I've been searching for this for years. So we don't we don't have to do a do a hard sale. We can uh, we can definitely definitely do it just by being what we say we're going to be. Have the uh, strike while the iron's hot. Uh, have the sign up forms ready to ready to complete and be able to collect the the affiliation fees that evening because uh, guys will show up with their checkbook ready to ready to go. Uh, some folks have a, uh, a, a they really uh, emphasize on being a charter member. So uh, to kind of kind of push it a little bit, have a cutoff date for charter members. If you want to be a charter member, you have to be uh, affiliated by by this this time, and sometimes that'll help nudge folk, folks along as well. After you do that, then you're off to the races. Uh, you know, organize with your your three principal officers, apply for your dispensation, and here's here's a strong one here. Uh, schedule your education session. I'm going to talk about our education sessions uh, shortly, but uh, have a 
have a real home run uh, speaker uh, come in, especially especially for your first one. And I, there's a guy up in I think he's Lexington, Kentucky, somewhere. He uh, he does a good job. So maybe uh, maybe get get some of those one of those guys from up there. They uh, they do a really good job. But have a have that home run speaker come in, get you off on the right right foot, and uh, we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Organize a harmony. Um, the uh, I tell you the uh, Masonic dining video is an absolute home run. It was uh, it premiered at the, the the MRF symposium, and everyone was blown away by it. So uh, this is uh, you've got a you've got a uh, an outline of how to do it. The the organizing the harmony. Again, I'm a an old manufacturer, so I've I've got to uh, I need a I need a playbook on how to do things. I need an operations manual. So uh, you got to source formalware and then source music lighting, your thurible, all the things that, that you'll need, the, the hard, hard items you'll, you'll need. Um, music, let's talk about that in just a moment. This is something that uh, you can go relatively inexpensive. Uh, the piece on the bottom uh, right is about $100. The one on the top right is about $1,500. And both, I tell you, the technology is so advanced in the last few years, and you can really fill up a room. We use the one on the top right, and we can we can blow the roof off the place if, if we want to. And so it's uh, that this is something that can be operated by a laptop or a tablet. We use we use a laptop, and it really sets the mood uh, for the, for the entire evening. Is having that mood that music. Uh, even through the, the opening of the lodge, uh, any idle time that you may have, uh, it really, uh, really sets the mood for the entire evening. It also slows the pace. Uh, it really, guys tend to, to kind of slow, slow it down when there's, when there's music involved as well. And it is, it's so powerful in, in conferring degrees. I've, I've spoken with, with folks uh, after their degree and, and, that was one of the things that they really, really spoke about was how the music really, really kind of solidified the, the words that were being, being spoken. During the, the harmonies, of course, you'll, you'll have songs there and recommend having a really gregarious person lead, lead the singing because uh, I'm not a singer. I've, I seldom, uh, even in a congregation at church, I seldom sing because I, because I'm, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but uh, if you've got a gregarious person leading on the harmony, uh, even I'll sing. So, uh, but it's it takes that that person that that leads it and keeps it going. Okay. Well, let's see. There we go. All right. I had a little technical difficulty there. Here we go. Now we're back. Okay. Lighting. This is something that is also very, very important. Uh, we use beeswax candles. Uh, we, we use different uh, uh, can, candelabras. We have uh, two seven candles in the east, five in the west, and two three candles in the south, as uh, well as three burning tapers at the altar and then at the secretary and treasurer station. And these, that's a that's a photo of it. They're they're on the right. It's the one that went in the east. We have two of those, and the the meeting space that we're in is uh, the typical lighting is fluorescent. Uh, luckily, it does have some incandescent on a dimmer switch. But well, when you turn those uh, fluorescent lights off and it's just candlelight, it completely transforms that space. It goes from a uh, you can see in the background. It's a it's a cinder block building. Uh, it goes from that to really a, a sacred space with that with that lighting. So uh, I can't emphasize as much how much that lighting will really really enhance that that experience that you have. Um, the thoroughfare, uh, we the, the sensing of the lodge. This is something that was very very new to us. Um, th this is going to take some experimentation, both with. Uh, with what you're using, how you're using it, how much to use. Uh, the first uh, couple of meetings that we have, it, it, man, it looked like we were burning tires uh, a couple of times. It really, uh, uh, it took us a, a little while to get it, get it down 
for what, what, uh, what we needed. And we also make a ritual of sensing the room. Uh, the brothers are, are um, marshaled in. So it's just the, the master, the thurifer, and the, the stewards are in the, in the meeting room uh, before we start. And we actually walk around and sense the room. Uh, and it's kind of a, a ritual that we do. And it's really, although there's only four people in there, it's, it, again, it sets that, that, that tone for, for the entire meeting. Uh, and it also helps distribute the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the sense of it. Uh, volumes of sacred law, we chose to, to have multiple volumes of sacred law uh, on our altar. Uh, and it's easily sourced from brothers, uh, whatever, whatever religion they are, they, they, and they want to share it. They love to share it. Uh, all of ours were shared by, by brothers of, uh, of the non-Christian brothers that uh, uh, they, were, they were proud to, to share their volume of sacred law with us. And of course, uh, if you can't, Amazon, if Amazon doesn't have it, you don't need it. So, uh, so yeah, we can, that, that can all be found uh, on Amazon as well. A period of quiet reflection. This, this is something, you know, our, our world is, is so full of noise. Uh, this is, and again, we're trying to create that sacred space. And so we have a period of quiet reflection and that's, that's completed soon after uh, the lodge is open. In fact, that's one of the, the very first orders of business is that, that period of quiet reflection. It's typically about five to seven minutes. And, um, as you can see in the, in the photo, uh, that's our musician and he has a Tibetan singing bowl and uh, it just kind of centers. It's very quiet. And uh, all you're hearing is the, is the sound of the, of the sing, singing bowl. And uh, certainly if the bowl is not available, obviously uh, soft instrumental music, so I recommend not using anything with words, uh, but a soft instrumental or Neither, I, I wouldn't recommend any uh, like Van Halen or anything like that. So, uh, so be, be mindful of, of that, that music. One of the things too is uh, making a big deal of little things, Make, making a big deal of little things. Uh, and we're so fortunate. Most of our, our, our group is uh, very good, very experienced ritualist. So we're not trying to focus on words. We're, we're focusing on the meaning of the words that, that we're saying. And uh, the, the little things include uh, lighting the tapers at the altar. Uh, in North Carolina, we're, we're lazy. And the only time we, we light the, the burning tapers is in the entered apprentice degree, typically in most lodges. But we, uh, we light the tapers uh, at, at every meeting and actually make a uh, ritual of it. It's done when the, uh, the Bible is open. Uh, proofing the square and compasses instead of just going up and uh, uh, opening the Bible and plopping the square and compasses down, the, the senior deacon actually uh, checks it for square, the square for squareness, uh, lays it down very gently, opens the, the compasses are closed, opens them up to the 60 degrees and uh, checks them and lays it down uh, on top of the, the, the square. So it's uh, making that big deal, taking that extra one, one minute to a minute and a half to do that. And it just really, uh, really brings it home. Uh, the do guards and signs, taking our time on those. Uh, sadly, uh, sometimes it's like uh, folks are uh, having a seizure or something. They're trying to do them so quickly, but we, we actually do the do guards and signs very slowly, very deliberately. And uh, so though, again, that's a, a little thing. Presenting the flag, uh, the senior deacon actually takes the flag and um, um, presents it on the north side of the altar uh, for the, the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, we, we do that at every, every meeting. And then of course, the chain of union at the end, the, the, what's showing in the photo, that's actually at Veritas Lodge up in Asheville, North Carolina beautiful, as you can see, a beautiful meeting space and uh, having that, that chain of union at the, at the end of the meeting. And then also the nuances in, in conferring the, de the, the degrees, uh, taking the little, little things and, and really driving, driving points home uh, with them. Um, 
in case we have some guests on, I won't uh, go into some of the detail on that. Okay, business. Uh, boy, in any lodge, we have to do business. But we use a uh, what's called a consent agenda. Uh, these are items that, uh, such as budget items that are already voted on, uh, or any uh, correspondence that we have that is just general correspondence. Obviously, if it's something that needs to be read in Open Lodge, we, we certainly do that. But if it's just general correspondence, we have that on the, a consent agenda. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds to, to dispense with that. It's uh, We meet on Wednesday. The secretary sends it out on Monday uh, prior to the meeting. Uh, the master will ask if there's any questions. Uh, if there's not, then he entertains a motion to approve the consent agenda and we move on. So that's about 30 to 45 seconds at, at the most to, to handle our, our routine business so we can get on with our, our labors. Uh, we also summarize the minutes. You know, nothing says Freemasonry like uh, reading of the minutes. So uh, we, we kind of summarize as much as we can and uh, that way we're not taking it. We also discourage announcements of um, whatever's going on uh, in the district. We, uh, because that is in the consent agenda, if anyone sends us an announcement, we put it in there as well. So uh, we discourage uh, sharing of, of announcements. Let's talk about lodge killers. Once, once you get going with some lodge killers, and obviously that's a uh, meeting just to meet. Uh, we have to meet for a reason. Everyone's busy in their lives and we, we need to meet for a reason. Um, another one is allowing that lodge boss that I mentioned earlier, uh, allowing them to go unchallenged. Um, you know, if you, if you really ask a lot of folks that maybe stop attending, if they'll, if they'll be truthful with you, a lot of times it's uh, these lodges that have the lodge boss who everything runs through them and they kind of run roughshod over everything. And so uh, that will, uh, they have to be challenged uh, if you want to have a, a thriving lodge. Uh, relaxing the dress code. I don't know why, but some folks want to, to just, uh, you know, let's just wear formal wear at, at degree work. That's, uh, that's not what we're about. And that's a, actually even in our affirmation or statement of principles is that we will wear, wear black tie. Uh, not having meaningful education. Uh, that's, that's something, you know, that, that's a tendency to uh, folks to want to go down the road of, of uh, going out cheap. And I'm, I'm going to explain our ed education session shortly. But uh, not having mean meaningful education. We have uh, two, two things. One is our, um, at our regular stated meeting, we typically have a 30 to 45 minute education session, and then three times a year, we have what's called our special education sessions. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But even at our state of communications, having that meaningful education, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that folks can get something out of, uh, that, that gives them a reason to, to attend. Not having harmonies, that's something uh, we've, and I'm, I'll freely admit, we've uh, a couple of our uh, sister lodges in the state uh, don't have harmonies, and it's that's where you jail. We, uh, you get guys around a nice meal singing songs. Uh, that's where the lodge really begins to jail is is at at the harmonies, and that'll that'll uh, that's. I think that's some of the problems that the, the guys are having that are that are struggling a little bit. And then certainly last but not least is guarding that West Gate. Uh, we've got to maintain uh, who, we, who we let in our midst. And that's not just the, uh, the organic members, our petitioners, but uh, folks who want to affiliate with us. We've got to, to thoroughly vet these, these folks to make sure they're, they're a good fit. We want to set them up to, to succeed. Mentioned earlier that organizational drift. Uh, these are things that, that typically will tend to, to come in after you've been doing a little while, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's just wear the tuxedos for degree work. Um, our dues are too high. You know, we're, we, you know, we will get more members if, if we lower them. And uh, uh, a, a dear, dear Mason said one time, uh, 
uh, I think you wrote a book on it. I think it was called uh, Sins of Our Masonic Fathers. And uh, that is, uh, uh, mentions it uh, very, very, very eloquently in there that uh, this is one of the, one of the sins is we, uh, we didn't keep up with our, with our dues. And uh, that's, that's something that will uh, give that organizational drift. Uh, we don't need to invite outside speakers. Uh, again, trying to, to save money and to quite honestly just be cheap uh, by not inviting our, the, the outside speakers in, uh, meaning uh, out of state guests that we have. Uh, pay as you go harmonies. We include the, the cost of the harmonies in our dues and uh, the lodges that are struggled typically want to have the pay as you go harmonies. And, and what I've, I've noticed firsthand uh, with some of these lodges is folks will come and they don't want to pay for a, for a good meal. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you, the lodge really starts gelling at the, at the harmonies uh, around, the, around the good meals. So uh, having the pay as you go is, is certainly something you don't want to do. Uh, and then, oh boy, can't help it. Then as my waistline shows, I love a good fish fry, but uh, you know, that's, that's not what we're about. We're not about uh, cooking fish or having fundraisers. We're about uh, educating masons. Some things to, to not do, uh, don't, just don't, don't even go there. Uh, candidate manipulation. Uh, there's actually a very good book that was written back, um, I think it was in the early 1990s, and it's called A Traditional Observant Lodge. And many things that actually we incorporated in there. But some of the things that they, they did was uh, some candidate manipulation with the, uh, having a hood that you put over the candidate when you pick them up. Uh, to go to their degree uh, in the car. Uh, so it looked like a, a hostage situation almost. And that's, uh, let's, let's stay away from that as well as some other things that, that did. That's, that's, that's not what we're about. Uh, the extreme chamber of reflection, uh, having things in there that are, that are maybe not appropriate uh, to, be, to be in a chamber of reflection. So just, just don't even go down that road. Uh, enhancing the ritual. In our jurisdiction in North Carolina, we, uh, we have the official standard of the work and that's, that's what we have to abide by. Uh, we can't go outside, uh, we can't add or take away. Now there's, there's uh, things we do, the nuanced things to, to really drive it home, but we, we can't enhance it or uh, anything. So another thing is the, uh, the intemperance or excess at the, at the harmony. Uh, we've got to be, be mindful of that. And, and I'm proud to say that uh, we've had probably, gosh, 25 to 30 harmonies over the years. And I've been to, to many more. And I've never seen that happen. Uh, and that was a concern that I had, uh, was someone that was uh, not, uh, um, uh, not following their obligations and uh, being a little excessive at, at the harmony. I've, I've never seen it happen. And so very, very proud of that, that, uh, that guys, but, uh, but there's all, all it takes is one time. So the uh, folks, uh, brothers need to be mindful of that. Uh, if they see someone that's maybe um, being a little excessive. I mentioned earlier, the, the special education communications that we have, we typically have these uh, three times a year. They'll start at 3 p.m. on a Saturday. And uh, the first session is in a tiled lodge. We, we do the regular opening of a lodge, just like we, we normally would. It's an emergent communication, uh, but we, we open the lodge. We invite our speaker uh, to, to have um, a session in, in a tiled lodge. Uh, in, in fact, even if their program is uh, something that can only be had in a tiled lodge, we, we ask them to do it in the, in the first session, which usually lasts 45 minutes to an hour after the lodge is open. Uh, then we'll close the lodge, uh, take a break. Uh, if, it's, if it's an author, they can sign books or uh, whatever they want for usually anywhere from 15 to, to 20 minutes or so. Uh, then come back in for the second session, which is in open lodge. And if it's appropriate, we'll invite, if we have any candidates going through or potential candidates, uh, we'll invite them in uh, for the, for the, uh, the second session uh, to participate with that. And then typically around 6 p.m., 
will uh, adjourn and have a have a harmony uh, after after that. We typically pay our speakers uh, guest speakers a, a three hundred dollar honorarium. Uh, of course, we'll pay for travel, hotel, meals, anything, any of their expenses while they while they uh, are with us. Uh, if it works out, we typically invite them in uh, on a Friday evening before, and one of the one of the brothers at their home will will have a, a very informal dinner, just for the the guys to get around. It's typically a hamburger and hot dog affair, and it's just a time you can fellowship uh, informally and just just have a good time and enjoy each other's company. Fundraisers mentioned mentioned earlier. Um, I, I just don't recommend them, uh, especially for an observant lodge. Um, we, we add charity as a budget item. We have, have that, it's, it's just part of our budget. We, uh, we take care of all our, our charity from there. But uh, if you do have a charity event, and I'm, I'm certainly not completely opposed to them, but if you do, it must be something unique and, and classy, uh, just it, especially the unique part of it. Uh, it needs to be something not your, your typical run of the mill. Uh, if a special circumstance arise, have an appeal to the craft. Uh, in, the, in the photo earlier of our, our musician that was uh, the Tibetan singing bow, that's Brother Don Barrier. He was actually traveling to a Masonic event and was hit head on uh, and literally had a, uh, a near-death experience uh, from, from that. And uh, he's got a really good story on that, but he was, he was in the hospital for over three months. Uh, he was, uh, when he was about to be discharged from the hospital, he was going to be in a wheelchair and was wheelchair bound for about a year. Uh, and like most of us, his home was not set up to accommodate someone in a wheelchair. Uh, luckily we had two building contractors in our, in our lodge. They went out, looked at the home, developed a budget. It was going to be about $10,000 to, uh, refurbish the, the bathroom and the doorways to, to accommodate uh, a, a wheelchair. And so uh, an appeal went out to the craft and there was a, um, a challenge made that if we could, could raise the $10,000 or close to it in uh, 24 hours, uh, it was a, uh, a matching that uh, uh, it was a $1,000 uh, uh, donation and then if we could raise the full 10,000 within 24 hours, he would add another ten or another thousand dollars to it. And uh, I believe it, the appeal went out just before lunch and by 5.30, we had the $10,000 raised. And this was from a 35, 36 member lodge. And so uh, that's, you know, that's, that's where our charity needs to be instead of selling fish or pancakes or anything. Uh, we, we take care of our, take care of our own. So, okay. Uh, so what to do after anything gets started, uh, the newness is going to wear off. Once, once you get, get going and get into a rhythm, uh, the newness, like anything is going, going to wear off after, after a bit likely. And then this was our experience. Uh, you're going to lose about 10% of your initial members that, that joined you. And that's for whatever reason, uh, life gets in the way Maybe it wasn't what they originally thought it was going to be. Maybe it was uh, for what, whatever reason. You're probably going to lose about, about 10%. Uh, you'll have, as I mentioned earlier, some folks are going to try to drift from the, uh, the, your principles, your statement of large principles. Uh, and this is our case as well. We'll have, have paying members, but they don't attend. They, they want to support us. They, they believe in what we're doing. They may attend once a year, but they're not a uh, every every meeting type type member. So that's that's typically what's going to happen. After the newness wears off, this is a time to uh, punch up the education. In our instance, what we did, um, we had had some some very very nice speakers in, but we had um, Christine McKinley come in, a lady, uh, she's out in Washington State. She was a, uh, one of the hosts on a, I believe it was on the Discovery Channel. It's one of those um, mystery shows uh, that uh, uh, tried to seek out the, the, uh, any, any mysteries. And she came in and her program was on feminism. 
And uh, I thought, oh boy, here she's, she's in uh, a room with, with 35 men with, with tuxedos on. She's just gonna, you know, she's gonna tell us the, the what for on things. And uh, she had those 35 guys eating out of her hand. Uh, she had a terrific program. Uh, we, of course, ran it by the, uh, the, the Grand Lodge saying that we're inviting a lady in. Obviously, we didn't do any ritual uh, opening the lodge. We did a, did a modified format, uh, nothing of our, our typical, uh, but we, you know, we still had the, the formal wear on and, uh, and it was uh, quite impressive. And she took it out of the park. And there's still guys, that's been five years ago, and still, guys still mention how good that, that session was. And uh, so it's kind of kind of punch up that education as well. Uh, after the newness wears off, you typically begin to initiate some organic members. Uh, it took us, uh, it was about two years before we had our first organic member uh, join us. We had uh, affiliate members uh, join, join with us. Um, also, after the newness wears off, it's, it's a good time to, to have some additional events. One of the things we did, we've had three now, is a uh, Robert Burns night. And uh, it's a one, it's, it's done, done very well. Uh, typically have about a hundred guests and just have a terrific large time. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, so that's things that you can do is have, have some additional events. Involve, involve the, the ladies in, in some of these additional events because they need to see uh, how important it is. And that's, that's one of the things that the ladies uh, notice is how much uh, the guys uh, really uh, uh, love and appreciate each other and enjoy each other's company and they see the caliber of guys and it gives them a whole lot better uh, feeling and understanding about what we're what it is we're, we're trying to do. So why was Sophia successful? Uh, a few things and again I mentioned we're, we're, uh, we had some uh, things we had to adjust but uh, we, were, we were successful for, for several reasons. One is, is we have a, a small group uh, of brothers who love and care for each other. We really do. That, it's, it's so, um, I guess it just, it, it's just such a good feeling. Uh, and you see guys uh, come up and hug each other, even guys that are not huggers, they, they'll hug. And uh, as, as one, uh, one of our members says, you know, it's okay for one dude to tell another dude that you love him. And uh, you, you, we hear that a lot, how much, how much the, the brothers that generally love each other. Uh, our special education communications that I mentioned earlier, uh, our commitment to excellence in ritual, that's, that's one of our uh, affirmation of principles. If you agree to do a part, uh, you agree to do it uh, the best you, best you absolutely possibly can. And uh, our guys take the, our ritual very seriously, especially even the, the degree work is very, uh, very precise, very, very on point. So uh, that commitment to excellence, I, as the Burns night that I mentioned, our harmonies that I mentioned as well. Another thing is the non-progressive officer line. Uh, just because you're senior warden does not mean that, uh, that you'll advance in the chair or if you're uh, junior deacon that you're going to advance to senior deacon. It's, uh, it's a non-progressive off officer line. Also, we, uh, we ask that the, the master, if, if he is elected, uh, to serve two years. It's a gentleman's agreement, uh, but that's, uh, and of course he has to be reelected, but it's a, uh, a two-year commitment if you want to, to, be, to be master of the lodge. Okay, so summarize, we're gonna land the plane here. Uh, get the right team. If you've got the right team, everything else falls into place. Uh, take your time. There's nothing to be uh, in any hurry about. Be accurate instead of uh, speed. Get it right, not right now. Uh, tweaks, uh, as I mentioned, we, we had some, some things that we needed to tweak. Uh, instead of just throwing it out the door, uh, we, uh, we, we made, made tweaks and, and actually it worked out for the best instead of just lurching from one thing to the other. Uh, don't go cheap. You know, that's both figuratively and literally. Uh, spend the money. Spend the money that, that you need to spend. Don't be wasteful, obviously, but spend the money that you need. Uh, and look to our past for guidance. 
You know, if you look at the at the photos from back in the, the early 1900s, uh, look at what they're doing. Look at what these brothers are doing. And uh, so look to them, look to them for guidance. Look to the old minutes uh, from, from meetings. Look, look to that them for guidance. Certainly ask for help and advice. Uh, there's there's fortune. There's there's a number of uh, lodges and groups around the around the country that will absolutely love to help you out and look for, for opportunities to, uh, to to help. Okay, uh, brother, that's uh, this is uh, this is actually after one of our harmonies. Uh, we've got some captains of industry sitting around. We're all uh, enjoying uh, cigars. And this is actually at a at a cigar shop. But uh, uh, brethren, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have e even after tonight. Uh, there's my email address. So if you have any questions or, or comments or anything or anything I can help you with, certainly uh, drop me an email. And uh, with that, I will turn it, Brother Brian, back to you and answer any questions that uh, that anyone may have. All right, terrific. Terrific, terrific. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you want to unshare your screen. Okay, stop I'll, share. I will take it back. Okay, you should have it back. Okay, thank you. Okay, terrific. Um, <clears throat> wow, that was... Um, a little bit of drinking from a fire hose, uh, I'm, I'm guessing for maybe for some people. Uh, that's a great presentation. And um, I have lots of questions actually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit a few and then I would assume that we have a lot of people that are interested in making some comments or questions as well. The first question I, wanna, I would like to put you on the spot in, 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 good, in, you know, in good nature, hopefully. So since you're the past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of North Carolina, I'm assuming that every lodge in North Carolina is as excellent as a lodge that you just described. Is that correct? <laughs> Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies, brother. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> what we did, what we have found out, uh, yes, we have. Uh, and we're actually, I'm proud of uh, our, our Grand Lodge. Uh, they're actually working to, uh, to do some things to, to improve lodge, especially with the, the layoff we've had. Uh, to, to help them. But uh, one of the things that we noticed is some things, uh, lodges aren't doing the full observant mode by any means, but uh, some of the, the things such as slowing down the dew guards, uh, bringing music in, especially during the uh, uh, conferring of degrees, uh, we're noticing that. So uh, that, that some, some changes that folks will visit our lodge and see things and think, oh, we can't do the full thing, but we can add this aspect to it. So that's, that's what we're noticing is, is that some lodges are, are doing that as, as well. And I see one of uh, our members of, uh, of Sophia Lodge, Brother, Brother Osbat, uh, it's got his hand raised. So uh, uh, it's good to, good, to hear, good to hear from Brother Dave. Uh, hello, most wishful brother Cardell. I'm, I'm living Colorado. vicariously through you on Facebook, my brother. I love your yeah. adventures. Thank you. You know where I'm at. I'm in Colorado. <laughs> 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 no, um, I'm um, on a committee to help establish a TO lodge in uh, eastern Colorado, maybe Wilmington or Naburn. I was hoping I can get a copy of your um, what, what you just presented. Absolutely. If you will uh, drop me an email, I will be happy to, to send, send that to you. Absolutely. I'm glad to do that. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good to hear from you, Brother Dave. Hope to see you soon. Absolutely. So if you don't mind, I'd like to revisit my, my comment in jest. So I don't see any um, Grand Lodge officers of the Grand Lodge of Kentucky here on with us tonight. If you are, please speak up. Um, but we have, in my, in my understanding, there's many that would uh, disagree uh, in detail with uh, a lot of what you mentioned um, and say that that's not Freemasonry. And that's not Freemasonry in, in Kentucky, or that's not my style of Freemasonry. And in my opinion, I think what you described is an outstanding description of Freemasonry. So have you encountered any, any of that? And if so, how have you handled that, especially as past Grandmaster? 
Yeah, a, a little bit, um, not, not any major pushback. It's, um, and, and one of my things is, is that, uh, as I mentioned, we don't emphasize uh, fundraisers or our charities. It's part of, part of our budget. And, um, and, and I dare say that if you asked, and I'll just pick on North Carolina, if, uh, if you ask the average North Carolina Mason, what, it, what, what does it mean to be a Mason, a Freemason? Uh, I would say nine in 10, they would start talking about our charities. And um, my pushback on that is, yeah, I'm, I'm about our charities. I'm involved in our charities. But it's that's not why we're here. That's that's an offshoot of it. And I and I just point back to uh, our oldest charity, which our children's home was formed 1874 in that in that neighborhood. Um, what were we doing the previous hundred years? You know, we didn't we didn't have that that charity in North Carolina. So what you know, were we just meeting to be meeting? Uh, so that's that's kind of my pushback. And and any of the charities. Was was handled within the lodge, or maybe within a few few lodges. So um, it's getting back to that education, uh, and it's what what uh, we're doing here this evening is uh, receiving, giving, and re receiving education. And that's uh, um, I'd like to, and it may be out of the away from the OSW, but uh, uh, what can you here to do? Uh, I put a comma in ours. Some of it is to learn to subdue our passions. Uh, mine is I put a comma there to learn, comma, to subdue our passions, comma, and improve myself in masonry. So that's, I break it down to three. So uh, that educational uh, experience. And, and we had, a, I, I had a, uh, uh, my home lodge, uh, Statesville Lodge, uh, came to me and said, can we have programs that teach us to be better people? And we had just a wonderful program at our last meeting on how to be a man, uh, what it means to be a man. And uh, it was a very lively discussion, very positive discussion. And uh, so those are, those are things that, uh, that we're lacking a lot. And so uh, that's, that's where the Observant Lodge comes in it uh, shows that we can educate our brothers. So I, I'm not sure, Brother Brian, I'm not sure if that answered your, your question or not, but uh, long-winded approach to it anyway. No, that's great. Um, how, what, is the, what is the length of your lodge meetings typically? Uh, typically, there will be open, time we open to close on a, on a stated communication night is gosh, an hour and 45 at the shortest. 215 probably at the at the longest okay and that includes your education and everything else you want. right it does that's opening to to, to close okay yes. and how frequently does your lodge meet we meet every other month we meet the uh the fourth wednesday of even numbered months okay. and then if we have uh the special education sessions are typically on the off month or if we have any uh degree work it's in the uh the off month as well so is that is that what's in the Constitution for North Carolina is is a minimum of six times a year every other month or is it not that uh, detailed? I, I believe the absolute minimum is four times a year. I okay. believe I believe quarterly is the absolute minimum, and I'm going from memory, so that uh, that may not be quite right, but it's it's I, I believe it's four times a year. Okay. Yeah. The only reason why I ask is is because in Kentucky we have to meet a minimum of once a month. And I, and I think sometimes having a little bit of time and space in between meetings can make meetings probably a little bit more effective and intimate in, in many instances. So that's why I was curious about that. Right. Um, brothers, if you have a question, please be, please be uh, willing to raise your hand, your virtual hand, or you're welcome to just speak out or type your question in the comment section. We have one that came in here from, uh, from Richard uh, Kovac. He says, what exactly is a harmony and how does it work? Good question. Yes, yes. Uh, forgive me for assuming that everyone knew what a harmony was. So thank you. Thank you for asking that. Uh, a harmony, uh, here's how we do ours. It is uh, uh, after our uh, special education session, we will go to a, uh, some, some lodges have it catered, but our facility is not set up for that. We go to a restaurant 
Uh, there's a couple of restaurants that will actually give us a private dining room and uh, we meet, it's a multi-course meal. Uh, during the meal, we have uh, prescribed toasts uh, where we uh, will we'll, uh, drink wine. There's a whole ritual that's shown very well in the uh, Masonic dining video. Uh, we sing songs and uh, enjoy each other's fellowship. And, and typically the, uh, uh, after the, each toast, there's a response uh, to most of the toasts. And also on our special education, the, uh, our speaker will maybe do just a kind of a, a final follow-up. Uh, dur during that time. So it's just a time to, to meet, enjoy a good meal, enjoy each other's company, and uh, uh, not be quite as formal as we were in the, in the lodge room. Uh, that's a very brief part of it. The, the, the video shows a much more uh, detailed part of it. And so uh, but that's, that's just a very brief overview of what the, what the harmony is. Yeah, I've heard a lot about this this video documentary coming out, but I haven't seen anything, so I'm I'm starting to think that it might be fake, um, <laughs> conspiracy theory. <clears throat> we'll find out. Um, Brother Tom, go ahead. Where's your Brother Cottle? Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, I took a lot, lots of notes. But my question is: is you talked about where you started a lodge on itself? What would you say to a, a lodge that's uh, trying to find itself? Uh, where would you start to, to try some of this stuff? What, what would be a good starting point? I think the, the best starting point is the education sessions. Uh, that, uh, that's kind of one of those uh, rising tides lift all boats. If you really punch up and start providing excellent education sessions, followed up by excellent ritual work, then things will, will start falling in, into place. But uh, the, the education, I think that's the, that's the critical component uh, that if you're just looking for something to start with at an existing lodge, that's, uh, in my opinion, that, that's the, the best place to start. Yeah, great answer. Good question. Brother Bruce, go ahead. Brother Bruce, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. I couldn't find, get my cursor to move over. Uh, again, excellent advice, uh, worshipful brother. Uh, my lodge has dwindled down to about anywhere between probably 11 to 20 people brothers that are attending uh, and that's a good night uh, and I'm unfortunately I'm sad to say that most of our members are no longer wearing jackets no longer wearing ties um, you know we've gone to business casual or even worse um, and I'm guessing our educational part is not even a lecture. It's a five minute reading of something uh, of interest. And I'm guessing, and, and then our business usually, the whole meeting generally, if we're running good, is about an hour long. And I guess I'm wondering, can a lodge bring it back from that type of atmosphere through education and through harmonies, through, you know, ritual, uh, a good ritual. Uh, and I think that's the part where I, I find it. We're not getting the commitment from officers to do the work. We're not getting the leadership to even want to do stuff. So can a, a lodge come back from that? or not? Brother Bruce, uh, sadly, that is, uh, yours is not a unique experience. Uh, in fact, my home lodge that I was, I was raised in, uh, we're going through something very similar. Uh, we actually went through a, um, 
uh, a time of weak masters. And that's where you get that operational drift coming in. Uh, but it can come back. We, uh, we've, uh, a, a, group, a core group has gotten together that maybe have drifted away and uh, we're coming back and uh, we're not coming in to, to certainly take over by any means, but to support the officers. And uh, instead of uh, coming in and saying, okay, we'll entertain me, uh, we're actually doing something about it. The guys are uh, either inviting folks to come in and speak or uh, do a program themselves. And uh, it, didn't hap it didn't drift down overnight and nor will it come back overnight. So it is, it's a process. And uh, but if you keep doing the right things, good, good things will happen. Uh, it starts with leadership. If the leader uh, will uh, start wearing a jacket, uh, typically the, the other officers may uh, start picking up on that as well. Uh, how do how do the new members learn things? They they learn it by watching us old guys. So if us old guys are wearing flip flops and shorts, then that's what they do. And so if uh, the leadership wears a jacket or a tie, then then that's what they know is 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 what what would happen. But but uh, don't be discouraged. Just keep doing what's right, and and things will come to pass. We're uh, we're uh, at, at its high point. North Carolina had uh, 80,000 members. We're down to about 35,000 now. Um, I'm not a big numbers guy. I'm a quality over quantity. Uh, I'll take 10,000 Masons over 80,000 members any day. And uh, so if you've, got, if you've got 10 to 12 good guys that are dedicated, you, you can have a lodge. You can have a wonderful lodge. And then start adding building building from there so uh but don't don't get discouraged i know it's hard it's easier said than done but uh try not to get discouraged uh, because there is uh just keep doing what's right yeah but thank you thank you for asking that because that's not an unusual situation sadly thank you yeah very good question very good answer uh brother travis go ahead well, good evening, Worshipful. Most Worshipful. Uh, I'm just, this might be putting the cart before the horse, but I'm curious, how did you get the money to start uh, an observant lodge like that? Obviously, you're talking about paying for hotels and food and travel for people, um, and you don't do fundraisers exactly, so how did you get the money? Uh, it came uh, as our, as our um, uh, code, North Carolina code says, uh, we have to fund by, by dues and initiation fees. So we had a, uh, at the very startup, it was $250 uh, to affiliate. Uh, and that was, that was in the spring. And then in January, the, the $365 regular dues kicked in. So, uh, so that, that's how we, we funded the initial startup. And, and we did, obviously didn't start with everything um we we had to add on as we could afford it um uh, but yes and that's where that budget that i mentioned comes in you uh you budget just like anything else and what you can afford is what what you spend so yeah but uh but yes it was funded funded by the brethren all right thank you yes sir thank you yeah travis i think that's actually a really good question and, and that's probably a question that a lot of lodges have and a lot of brothers have is we want to provide a great experience but funds are limited um, certainly to a degree I know some lodges have other sources of income uh, for their lodge D does Sophia have anything like that no we uh, we actually rent uh, our space from a uh, an existing lodge uh, down in Salisbury North Carolina mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have the overhead of, of operating the building we have the the overhead of rent uh, which is I would say it was on par. Uh, it's not, they're not giving it to us at a, uh, a, an extremely low rate, nor is it uh, extremely high. Uh, but yes, those, uh, those, are, those are things that, uh, that you, you have to t take into consideration in the budget as well. Yeah. Uh, we have a few questions and comments from our co-hosts as well. Worship Brother Bizak, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, excellent overview, most horseful. Thank you very much. Just a comment this evening. Uh, 
I was invited to Sophia a year or so before the pandemic, and that was my first visit. And I've been fortunate to visit several lodges in the country that were practicing what we've all come to call observant masonry. And all were at various stages of their progress, but everything done the evening I visited Sophia was, was very impressive. Uh, Doug even opened up his home the night before for a great dinner, and cigars, with brothers from the area, not just some from Sophia. But what struck me most about the experience of Sophia was the um, genuine fellowship in the lodge. And later at the Harmony and dinner after the meeting, there was this atmosphere created by the um, friendliness and that brotherhood in that lodge room and at the Harmony. And uh, that's what left an indelible impression on me that evening. Doug is right. There's a, a great, well, there's a lot of huggers in that lodge and it's all quite genuine. So uh, congratulations, Doug, on Sophia's work and uh, their continued direction. And thank you very much for uh, being with us tonight. Thank, thank you, Brother John. We, we certainly enjoyed having you, you as well. So absolutely, your, uh, your, your uh, presentation was, a, was, a, uh, was definitely a home run with the guys as well. They really, really enjoyed it and appreciated it. Thank you. Great. Uh, Worship Brother Dan, did you have anything you wanted to mention? Most worshipful Brother Caudill, thank you for your time and, and for your presentation. I, I'm a little curious, if, if you don't mind, about your personal journey. Uh, did, did you come into Freemasonry seeking an observant experience? And if the answer to that is no, how did you evolve toward that, uh, toward that position? It's... Uh... My, my journey began 20, soon be 29 years ago. Um, my first curiosity was in the newspaper, seeing uh, each year uh, in January or so, seeing a group of men that were uh, many that I knew, and one had a hat on. And I was just curious why none of the rest had a hat on but the one. And uh, I'd noticed the caliber of the men uh, coming in. And the, the, the lodge that, that I joined, um, it was, I guess I was looking for that observant experience, but, uh, what I received was it was a very, uh, ritual centered lodge. Uh, every, we had a lot of wonderful ritualists, but, uh, I didn't know what I didn't know. I thought that the learning, the education ended after the, the lecture was over. Uh, because we were also very involved in fundraising as well for, for our charities. So, uh, but then after, I guess, after the newness wore off, that's when I, I started looking, uh, thinking that we, there, there's got to be more to this uh, than, than having a pancake uh, supper for our, for our charities. Uh, there's, there's got to be more. And, and I actually, um, I won't say disheartened, but uh, nor did I drift away. It just, uh, the passion wasn't there. Uh, I was always looking, seemed to be looking for something. I actually looked, uh, you know, at the Scottish Rite, uh, which uh, fed it a little bit, not as much as I wanted, but it did, did feed it a little bit. Um, and then uh, there was some uh, guy named Andrew Hammer came to North Carolina and spoke. And it was, yes, this is what we want. Uh, in his book, that was the, that was the genesis to it. Uh, it was kind of a, uh, this guy understand, I, I, I maybe wasn't able to express the way I was feeling, but he expressed in his words what I was feeling. And uh, that was the, the genesis for Sophia. And it was a, uh, a group of Masons and, and none of us, we're, we're all from all parts of the state. Uh, uh, our membership is not clustered in one area. We, uh, we draw from, from several miles away. Uh, I drive, it's probably 45 minutes for me to drive and there's guys that will drive way over an hour. Brother Dave, uh, that was on just a moment ago, he comes from the, from the coast when he's able to join us. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's not any kind of local, just a cluster of guys. But, uh, but yes, that was, uh, I really didn't, I couldn't put my finger on what I was looking for, but I wasn't receiving it. 
But then when I started reading and, and hearing these guys, it really amplified my, my feelings. So that's, that's kind of my, my journey of how I got here, Dan. Well, Sportsman, sir, I, I would suggest that, that you've said the magic words. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would wager that every man participating here this evening has at some point in time said there must be something more. Yeah. And uh, I think that's probably what brings us together. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, well said, great comment. Um, we have a question from Bob Heater, chaplain of Lexington Lodge number one. From your experience, is Lodge prayer offered differently or does it hold a different place within an observant lodge? In ours, uh, in North Carolina, we have to abide by the official standard of the work. Uh, we have prescribed prayers that is uh, for opening and closing our, and it's, it's prescribed, it's, it's uh, recommended that we do, but uh, it's kind of left, uh, a lot of times we've had, um, we'll use just our, our regular prayers that are in our monitor, uh, but then maybe if there's a special special circumstance going on, uh, uh, for example, we had um, a member of our lodge uh, develop cancer, uh, and he um, we we had a just a wonderful uh, instead of just the the typical prayer of uh, when the chaplain goes up and has the prayer, we actually all. Every, every person gathered around the altar and had a prayer for our brother uh, who was battling, battling cancer. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's what, whatever, the, whatever the need requires. Uh, so we, we have that flexibility to, to be able to, uh, to do this, uh, to, to whatever, whatever event is going on, we're, we're able to, to incorporate that if, if it's appropriate as well. Great. Uh, do you have harmonies after every stated meeting? We don't. Uh, the the the, the full-fledged harmonies are after our special education sessions. Okay. Uh, several times, uh, in fact, the other night we uh, uh, we had a master mason degree that didn't end until about ten thirty, and uh, we still still went out uh, just to a local restaurant that. Uh, uh, served, served late, uh, and, that, and that's what a lot of times will happen. Uh, we meet on a Wednesday, so uh, many of the guys still work, uh, and maybe it's more of an informal where we'll go and uh, maybe just uh, uh, have something to drink or just sit, sit in fellowship, but the, uh, the harmonies are just after the special education sessions. Great. So, uh, gentlemen, if you have any other questions, now's the time to let us know. Um, and I have a, a transition question. If any more come in, I'm, I'm curious, could you just elaborate a little bit further on the feminist speaker? And, and, and in all seriousness, you know, what was your topic of conversation? Um, and, and you said your brothers took it well. So could you just elaborate on that story a little bit? It was. She, uh, she came in, you know, I was expecting a, a full on toxic masculinity uh, type uh, beat down for us. And uh, she, she shared with us. In fact, uh, several of us afterwards mentioned that we really wish if we'd known it was like this, we would have invited our wives to attend. Uh, but she, she talked about uh, what it is to be a man, what it is to be a, a, a lady. And, and one of the things that, that popped out was uh, she, she is a, uh, a feminist, but she still enjoys being treated like a lady. And for, for example, opening a door uh, for, for a lady. Uh, some guys uh, that I know are at, at times have been uh, uh, scolded for opening a door for a lady. Uh, but she said, you know, it's, that's just uh, good manners. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you open it, whether it's a lady or, or, or anyone else, it's just good manners. And she, she uh, really said, you know, don't, don't lose that. Don't be so afraid that you're going to offend a, offend a lady that you stop treating her like a lady. And so that was one of the big takeaways that, that, uh, that I took, took from that. So, yeah. Good, great. I just have one more question. Yeah, please. Go uh, have you, uh, uh, on this observant lodge, is there, have you ever given thought to 
limiting the membership, the total membership of the lodge or, and or, um, so you said that you have members, for example, that are paying dues, but not participating or really, I guess, in a sense, contributing. Have you thought about um, limiting, um, I guess, membership in that way as well? So like if they are, if they are paying dues, but not participating, maybe um, asking them to find another home so people that can participate can. Uh, Brother Travis, that was actually a big discussion that we had uh, at, at the organizational meetings. Uh, one of the numbers we, we threw out uh, was 47, uh, from just 47th problem of Euclid. Uh, but then it, kind of the general consensus was, is that our due structure, our statement of principles will be self-leveling and uh, that we didn't need to do that because one of the concerns is if that we limited the membership, then that's just another arrow to throw at us that, you know, oh, you're just not wanting the uh, regular Masons to join. You're just wanting a bunch of, bunch of rich guys to join. Uh, so I'm glad we didn't go down that road of uh, limiting membership, but it, it, it levels itself if you, uh, your due structure and your, uh, your commitment to excellence. And, you know, if 50 guys, we're, right now we're at, I think we're at either 40 or 41 members. Um, if 50 or 60 guys uh, want to pay the dues and uh, live up to our statement of principles, then, then, then that's fine. We've, uh, we've got the capacity, but uh, I wouldn't want to go much higher than that because then you start losing that intimate uh, uh, connection with each other, uh, knowing each other, knowing the, the struggles that we, we all go through. Uh, it's, it's incredible uh, the, the calls that are, that are made, uh, especially during the pandemic. Uh, I received and actually made, made several calls uh, from, from brothers just, just checking up, uh, th those type of things. So, um, uh, yes, there's, there's a fine edge between too many members. If we had 100 members, I don't think it would be as, as, as special. But I think as, as long as we're in that 40 range, 40 to 50 range, we're going to be okay. And, and I think it's, you know, after 10 years, it's kind of, that's where it's, it's always hovered in that. I think the lowest we were, we're at 33 and we're at the highest now that, that we've been. So, yeah. What's your average participation for a given meeting? Uh, 15 to 20, uh, okay. depending, depending on uh, the special education sessions, typically 30 to 40. But uh, just the average state of communication in, is in that 15 to 20 range. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Worship Brother Gerald, would you like to make a comment? Yeah, I would. Um, <clears throat> first of all, most worshipful Douglas, uh, thank you for uh, uh, a really useful um, presentation. Uh, having uh, been one of the founding members of a of a servant lodge uh, four and a half years ago, um, that 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 would have been a great uh, checklist uh, for us to have. But what I uh, asked to have some time to talk about is to emphasize um, the utility of um, a, a correct approach to guarding the West Gate. Um, I also am a member and my primary uh, commitment is, is to South Pasadena Lodge, which is 135 years old. And um, uh, turning a lodge like that in the direction of, of observance is, uh, is, a is a real trick. It's like trying to turn the buffalo herd before it goes over the cliff. But, um, what really, what really, um, the way that we have done it and are sustaining it is to first of all start with that that education program, and and get that that going and being popular, and after that, using every social gathering that that we have, and we have a lot of those, to to have the members that are involved in that education um, make a point of 
uh, spending their time with guys there who are in that category of a prospect and talk to them and talk up the Masonic education and the observant practices and, and, um, and uh, strongly encourage the people that are important uh, or that, that, that that's important to, to join the lodge and to, to um, have the, have the, have the discipline, if you will, that that people who tell me tell us that that they're not that interested in that, then we tell them not not that they're not welcome in that lodge, but that that's the passageway through to get into this lodge. It's going to take you a couple of years to go through your degrees. You're going to have a number of uh, things that you're going to do that are beyond the Grand Lodge uh, uh, expectations. And uh, be, be be ready and willing to to direct them to other lodges that are that are quality lodges, but um, are just not into uh, the kind of things that that um, we've been talking about uh, here tonight. And um, that kind of that kind of guarding the west gate, as because as as people come in and 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 join. I will tell you one thing, the guys that are in their 20s and their 30s and their early 40s, this is what they're looking for. And, and um, if you encourage those and, and try, to, try to make your, your population in your lodge more and more those kind of people that want those things, that want the formality, that want the uh, education, want the study, that want the esoterics, not to, not to make it where somebody um, would not be allowed to join the lodge if that wasn't that, uh, that wasn't their interest, but they have to pass through that. And it's amazing, a lot of guys that come in and they say, well, I'm willing to be patient about it. Uh, uh, I'll give it a try, turn out to, to really, really like it a lot, but, uh, I think that's a, a strategy that has has worked at uh, and is working at uh, South Pasadena Lodge in Southern California, and uh, I would recommend it to uh, others that are involved in lodges that want to turn them in that direction. But Brother Gerald, I, I couldn't agree more. That's uh, that was one of the things, and I and I didn't go into it. Uh, for hours, any of our, our candidates that that present themselves uh, to be a candidate. Uh, we do ask that they uh, uh, meet with us, uh, of course, with the investigating committee. We, uh, in North Carolina, we have a really good uh, investigating committee uh, program. Uh, but also to come to at least one, if not two or more, uh, of our uh, harmonies that we have uh, after the special education session, uh, if it's appropriate for them to attend the, uh, any of the, the, uh, the second half of the education sessions. Uh, we do that. We also, uh, with ours, we have a, a catechism that you have to learn. Uh, it's not a race. We, we, they have to learn it uh, properly and also present a paper uh, on the degree before they advance to, to the next degree. So after they return their entered apprentice catechism, then they, uh, they present a, a paper on their experience so far, uh, what they were looking for, what they received. And those, uh, we've had some very powerful uh, ones of those. So uh, we have those not- as well, uh, uh, Worshipful. And um, we, uh, we've built up the education section of our stated meeting degrees by having those um, candidate presentations be 10 minutes and we have one just about at every meeting um, and and um, we 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 make it clear and, and this is the most important part is make it clear up front you're going to be required to jump through these hoops whether you're you whether you're interested or not you're going to have to do the full form uh, uh, um, uh, proficiencies uh, we've also upped our standards on the full form proficiencies. If they're if they're not very good, we we ask them to to um, do it again. And um, 
uh, it's not that it's a proficiency that the Grand Lodge wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh, nod their head yes on, but that it's um, it's it's not moving in the direction of the level of excellence that we want to have be the culture of the lodge. Right, exactly, and that's uh, you're right. In fact, in North Carolina, you do uh, you, the to return the um, the only time you have to return the Master Mason uh, catechism if you'd like to be an officer in the lodge. But that's part of our statement of principles: is that uh, whether you be an officer or not, you still still return the Master Mason uh, catechism. But but yes, that uh, we vet them very. Very close, and also our affiliate members, folks who want to affiliate with us. In fact, the uh, our first member after we received our charter uh, that wanted to affiliate with us um, was not accepted, and uh, it was he was not going to he just was not going to fit our fit our culture and uh, the culture we were trying to develop. And so that was that was a tough night. Uh, you know, here our we're a new struggling lodge, and we're we're uh, we're blackballing uh, to our members of other lodges. So, so yeah, that was. Uh, but uh, in the long term, uh, it was best for him and best for our lodge. So uh, yeah, we more with a uh, a white ball than we have with the uh, with the black cube. That's for sure. Great, good comments, Worship Brother Jerry. <clears throat> um, the hour is is getting late. I do have one more quick comment to make, and then um, most worse, I'll let you finish with any final comments that you want to make. Um, what stood out to me, I mean, you have you gave a lot of great information, great advice, great how-tos. Um, one of my favorite things, I just want to make this comment, was make a big deal of the little things. And I think Freemasonry actually can be quite easy and enjoyable if we do the little things, uh, such as opening doors uh, for other people, uh, having a good handshake, looking at each other in the eye, speaking well, showing up on time, looking our best. It's its the little things, I think, that really make a difference. So that that was a profound statement for me tonight, For and I appreciate you being here. So any final comments you would like to make before we proceed to a close? You know, I've uh, I've talked most of the night, and uh, it's uh, really, I really appreciate it, and it does my heart good. I think we had uh, in the high 30s of, of brothers in attendance, I saw on the Mm -hmm. uh, participants, and that uh, we have that many brothers that are interested in this, and, you know, it's up to us to deliver, and so, uh, but thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for, for offering this, this format, this forum uh, for brothers to, to get together and share uh, and, and find out these best practices from around the country, so thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, and, and continue doing what you're doing, so thank you so much. Well, thank you. Pleasure is ours. Uh, are there any final comments from William O'Ware, Rubicon, or Lexington Lodge 1? Worship Brother Tom, I'm sure you have some updates for us. Uh, just uh, just one real quick, the, the hour is getting late. Uh, it's just our, our uh, next stated meeting for William O'Ware Lodge of Research it will be June 29th at 7.30. It's our, our annual papers night. So if you're in the area of Covington, Kentucky, we would love to have you uh, for an awesome presentation. And uh, to Worship Brother Call, Caldwell, uh, I, I just have to say you, you spoke to me at many different levels. And uh, to that, I just have to say thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Worship Brother Bizak, would you mind just giving a brief teaser about the festive board that we are planning in August? Sure. Uh, we're having our 10th annual festive board at Spindle Clock Hall. August Friday, August 26th here in Lexington. Uh, invitations and announcements will go out uh, next month. As a matter of fact, uh, we're, our guest speaker will be Brent Morris. And um, we hope that uh, there's some brothers on this uh, site tonight who will join us. Thank you. Uh, only, only other comment uh, I would like to make is to get every, give everybody an update on the documentary. Uh, if anyone knows anyone at Amazon that can uh, ask them to give us the final approval, uh, that would be great if you could make that call. I don't anticipate any problems. I just think it's just backlog probably for them. 
Um, so I appreciate everyone's patience. It should have been out by now, but it will be out soon. And if for some reason it is not out um, before the next meeting, then we'll likely have um, a viewing. We can have a private viewing on YouTube or something else. We'll find a way to make sure everyone sees it. Um, I, I want you guys to know real quick uh, of the abuse that I take on this side of the screen. Um, brother, worship brother David Kisessa just called me a slacker. So um, I appreciate that, David. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you for your patience. I hope that when it does come out that you guys really enjoy it. So worship, worship being, Brian, do you guys uh, have a uh, program set uh, for this series for next month yet? Uh, we do. Thank you uh, for that reminder. Uh, Worship brother Mark St. Sears will be giving a presentation for us. And do we have that topic, John? Do we know a topic yet? Uh, you're muted. John, you're muted. Unseen and plain sight. Say that one more time, please. Unseen in plain sight. Unseen in plain sight. Great. And could you, could you spell uh, uh, St. Sears for me? Uh, S-T-C-Y-R. That all one word or? Uh, Mark, St. S-T period, C-Y-R, separate words. Okay, great. I can still get it into the fraternal review calendar. Great. Great. Thank if you. anyone doesn't subscribe to the Fraternal Review, you should. It's an outstanding publication. They do a great job. Um, just outstanding information. It's one of the best pieces of printed material I think you can get these days. So definitely do that. And there's a re recent uh, there's a recent issue on um, the uh, the the dining uh, uh, experience in masonry that uh, was guest edited by. Uh, the Brothers of the Rubicon Society. Yeah. So that was just a couple of months ago. Thank you, brother. Uh, everyone, if you, as you know, Rubicon is now a 501c3. Um, so we're always interested in additional support to help us prolong these educational series. Um, and that is how you get in touch with us. Worship Brother Tom, would you please do the honors of delivering and closing prayer? Brethren, if you will join me. Grand Architect of the Universe rule of heaven and earth, now that we are about to separate and return to our respective places of abode, wilt thou be pleased so to influence our hearts and minds that we may, each one of us, practice those great moral duties which are inculcated in Freemasonry and with reverent study and obey the laws which thou has given us. Amen. Uh, thank you for joining us, brothers. We meet again on June 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you all there as well. Uh, feel free to share the link, rubiconmasonicsociety.com slash RSVP for anyone that may be interested in participating in this series. Uh, we will close with the trailer for the Masonic Table, which is further proof that it does exist. And hopefully this will be the last time that you'll see the trailer prior to the actual showing. So thank you all for your patience uh, and God bless. Talk to you soon.